All right, guys, welcome back to Comp Cams. We're here today with one of our another, another one of our horsepower tech videos. Today, we're talking about Spintrons. This is gonna be pretty exciting. We've had lots of people uh, asking to do some uh, information or a video on Spintrons and all the different things. So we're in one of our Spintron cells today, one of our two that we have here at Comp Cams. And we're gonna talk to you a little bit about what goes into this, so stay tuned. So when you're looking at the engine on the Spintron, you'll see a lot of things that look very familiar. The block, the cylinder heads, the front cover, everything looks pretty standard. The one really unique thing about an engine that's on the Spintron machine is that the mandrel, or basically the piece that's in place of the crankshaft is just simply a straight mandrel. The mains are finished, same way as a crankshaft is. It has oil going through the block, just like it normally does, but there are no throws and there are no rods and pistons at all inside the engine. Once we get up into the valve train and the cylinder heads, everything is exactly as it would be on the engine. We run a belt drive or a timing chain, whatever the application uh, is gonna use. We have the camshaft, the push rods, the lifters, the rockers, the valve springs, everything just like it would be exactly inside the engine. And that is very, very critical. We'll talk about that a little bit more when Billy gets in here. Uh, but uh, the, the running of the engine on the Spintron needs to be as close as possible to the actual application that we're testing for, for perfect results. So we're here today in the Spintron room with uh, our lead camshaft engineer, Billy Godbold. And we're gonna talk a little bit about Spintrons, uh, what we do with the Spintron, why we use the Spintron, and uh, just all kinds of little details like that. So thanks for joining us today, Bill. Yeah, I appreciate glad to come it. back. So tell me a little bit about what goes into a test on a Spintron, why we're using this machine versus an engine dyno, and then kind of why this transla translates into the engine dyno afterwards. Well, you know, one of the things that you have to understand, if you took a generation or two back cam designers, you take your Ed Escuderians, your Harvey Cranes, they had to go to the dyno and learn everything there. Yep. And they had to listen to the dyno, hear what it's doing, think about what the valve's going, and go, hey, I heard this, the dyno curve did this, I think the valve did that. Yeah. So it was very, very subjective, and it wasn't very accurate, you know, but it gave them an idea. Now, we actually have a pretty good idea from all the dyno testing. If we make the valve do what we want to, want to do, how is the engine going to respond? So that's why you have two dyno, one dyno cell next to two Spintron okay. cells. Yeah. Um, in here, what we're doing is we're tracking the valve motion. So we take a new cam design before it ever goes to the dyno. It normally will come in here. We'll do laser tracking. We'll look at the different components. We're gonna see what the valve is actually doing because a valve is very much like an unruly kindergartner. <laughs> you can tell the valve what you want it to do. The engine does not respond one bit to what you told it to do. Yeah. The engine responds to what the valve actually does. And this is the no BS room. This is where you go in here and go, hey guys, here's what the valve is doing. Absolutely. That's, that's very good information. So. Let's tell everybody a little bit about some of the things that we use on this Spintron. So up in front, I don't know if we can see it on the camera or not, but we have mm -hmm. a laser down yep. there. And I know that we also use some strain gauges and a bunch of different things like that as well to measure lots of different stuff. So maybe yeah. get into that just a little bit. No, this, the, um, you know, a lot of people can go out and just buy a Spintron and that's great and everything. Yep. Um, the Spintron, you know, when Bob Fox originally did it, great piece, we had the, Hendrix had the first one, we had the second one. Yep. You know, we were the, you know, we were on the very cutting edge and we actually did Optrons before it. But the Spintron software is usually used a step test with their laser. You know, we've upgraded the laser, mm -hmm. you know, um, but we don't just do a step test. We usually run a dynamics test and we try to take every revolution of data record that. We're looking for transients, we're looking for things going in and out of control. Compared to sitting there and stopping and taking 10 revolutions and averaging those, we're looking at every cycle the engine makes, we're looking at an acceleration rate that matches what's going with it. But the laser just tells part of the story, like you said. You know, if we're doing a full-on, like a NASCAR pro stock level of test in here, yeah. 
this place will be instrumented like Darth Vader's bathroom. <laughs> you know, sorry if you missed that because of the wrong generation, but um, there'll be wires in here looking like crazy because we can run, we can run multiple strain gauges. You know, it's common for us to have a strain gauge on the push rod and on the rocker arm. We can have a load cell up underneath the valve spring. We can be looking at that. We can run strain gauges on the spring wire itself. So we can look at, like we're doing conical spring development, we could look at the stress on each coil of a conical spring. So you could balance the stress between all of them. Um, there's a number of sensors. You know, we can we might use it on national instruments, our lab, do you think? Very similar to what you'd see in a national lab in a, in a research facility. We write all our own software. We use the Spintron software to control the engine. So it's the motoring side of it. And then we do everything on the data acquisition side. Absolutely. Well, and just to go back one step further, we didn't really talk about, I guess at first, what we do on the Spintron here when we set up an engine. And I think that's a big misconception. People hear it running, but they don't realize that there's no rods and pistons in this thing. No. So maybe let's talk about that just a little bit and how it gets set up on the machine and, and how we do that. No, it's crazy. You know, the first time anybody comes in here and runs, they, they are flabbergasted because it sounds like an in-car camera on a sure NASCAR does. deal. It is crazy how much of the engine sound is actually from the valve train side of it. Yeah. So yes, we take a block and you want to take a block as close to the real block as you're going to run. Now, if you're like doing top fuel tests, that gets real easy because those guys make Spintron blocks every few passes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I have one at home, right, actually. Right, right. Yeah. NASCAR side, not as many, but you know, we take a block that's as close to the same deck height, the same camshaft, the same lifter board configuration, as close as possible to what the guys are going to run in the, te in the application we're running. It was street, race, whatever. And then you take it over the mill, you cut a big window into one side. You want it as big as possible from cylinder bore to cylinder bore, all the way down to the pan rail, yep. all the way up to the cylinder head. Give you plenty of room to look at the valve because a lot of guys just put the laser anywhere on the valve. We don't care about the whole valve motion, we care about the margin motion. So we're trying to get the laser over on the side where the valve is flat, where when it hits the seat, you don't see the oil canning in the center and everything like yep. that. So it's extremely sophisticated. You can't just slap this stuff together. But we'll go in here, get everything set up where the laser gets where it wants. Then you build the top end of the motor exactly like you're going the to run it. Would be, yeah. So tell me a little bit about some of the things that we can't do on the Spintron versus in real world or on the engine dyno or, or what some of the differences are there. Yeah, we've had some interesting times trying to figure out when you try to emulate a failure that we see in the field and bring in the Spintron. You know, one of the things that was interesting, like a offshore race boat when it's coming in and out of the water, mm -hmm. we could, they were breaking locks and retainers. We couldn't figure out a way at the RPM that they were running to create that same failure. Yeah. So we started doing some work with it and we go, hey, if we go another 2000 RPM, we can actually recreate that failure. Okay. So sometimes it's going back and forth and what was actually going on is for like a quarter of a revolution when that, pop, when that prop shaft gave way, it was slinging the engine up or down so fast that we had to go to higher speed. Yeah. Normally, that, then you hear people talking about firing engines versus motoring engines. This is a motoring engine, there's no compression. Yes. Well, that's okay for three of the four valve events because when you open the exhaust, you know, by then there's a little, that's the, that's the messy one. That's the one where you've got a lot of cylinder pressure Absolutely. still in there. That's the one that worries us. Now when you close the exhaust, you assume there's about zero pressure across the thing. Yeah. When you open the intake valve, very low pressure across the cylinder. Yeah. When you close the intake valve, if there's a big pressure drop across the cylinder, you closed at the wrong time. Yeah. You know, if there's a lot of pressure in the more cylinder pressure than there is man manifold pressure, Absolutely. you're pushing yeah. out, pushing yeah. in. The main application where we get into issues though, that that exhaust opening only really plays with us with slow burn rate fuels. And the okay. one yeah. notoriously slow burn rate fuel, nitromethane. Nitromethane. Yeah. yeah. If Everybody you thinks it, it's really fast, but in fact it, it's, it's not. It's really slow. It's, once, know, it, once it goes, sometimes it can The be pressure inside a chamber in nitromethane is not nearly as high as a pro-mod nitrous car. Yeah. But a pro-mod nitrous car holds that pressure for like two degrees. Yeah. You know, the top fuel car, just goes up there and just pancakes across. Thanks. And so you're opening up against a lot of pressure there. That's the one application where we really have trouble. We can emulate three of the vents, we can't emulate the other. Normally for gasoline or even for alcohol, 
the pressure's dropped to such a point by the time you open the exhaust that you're going to get a very accurate emulation on the spin which you get a running engine. If it is different, normally we can do just like we did with the boat thing, but yeah. instead of crutching it by 2,000 RPM, usually crushing it by 1 or 200 RPM, and you can Absolutely. get the same type torsions. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, that's great information. Thank right. you. Well, I just know that, you know, this is an amazing tool. I look back at the guys who had to do camshaft development without seeing what the valve was actually doing. And I came into the first generation of cam designers that really were able to work from seeing what's going on. And so basically it's cheating. We're looking <laughs> at the answer sheet before we take the exam. Yeah. And so this is the amazing tool. This tool, when you know how to use it, shows you the answers before you go over to the dyno. And then the dyno doesn't become an investigative tool. It becomes a confirmation tool. Absolutely. Well, I think you hit a perfect point there is that you can have a Spintron and you can have all this data, but if you don't know what you're looking at or you, you don't know what to do with it, it's, it's, right. it can be a very useless tool or dangerous tool because it can get you into real trouble. Yes, yeah, so there, there's a lot to be learned on what to learn on the Spintron. It's not just having it, you know, there's a lot of things going on. Absolutely. Excellent. Thanks right. very much. Thank you. So when we get into the Spintron cell here, obviously you see the engine sitting on here. It's, it's got a big electric drive. We're going to talk about a little bit of the details of this later. But the one cool thing to really remember is how we can do this testing. Not but 50 feet away in the other room is all of our cam grinding equipment. So when we're testing a, an engine or, or a setup on the Spintron, we can literally test something get the data, get the results. We can pull the camshaft out. We can go grind another one in, in 15, 20 minutes, have a new camshaft in here and test again. We can just literally do that all day long. So the cycle is, uh, the, the amount of different testing we can do in a very, very short period of time is second to none. There really is nobody else out there that can do the type of testing that we do um, and in the time frame that we do it in. So another key thing to remember about the Spintron is uh, that, like I talked about, the engine is on here, simulated basically as close as we can to the vehicle, but it has its own oil system on the Spintron, basically very, very similar to a dry sump oil pump system where it pumps oil out of a tank through the engine, just like it normally does inside the, the vehicle. Um, but it is a self-sufficient oil system to make sure that we do get proper lubrication on the Spintron. The other point to remember is that because there is no combustion and the crankshaft is not turning itself from the combustion from the rods and pistons, behind the Spintron block is a great big electric drive. This particular <coughs> unit has a 75 horsepower electric motor on it that has the ability to pretty much drive just about anything you can imagine and accelerate the engine at all kinds of different RPM per second rates. The electric motor is basically controlled by an electronic software in a computer and we can do uh, simulations of, of road courses, drag strips, oval tracks, boat racing, all kinds of different things. I mean basically whatever we're testing we have the ability to drive that electric motor and create or simulate what we're doing. The other really, really unique part about a Spintron is the ability to do endurance testing. And this is really cool because you're not using any gasoline, you're creating way less heat with the engine, so we can do some tremendous cycle testing as we call it on the Spintron. So we recently just did a test on, on some new camshafts um, with some, some different coatings and things like that that we're doing. And we actually ran a camshaft in the Spintron for one million cycles. Um, we actually did the initial test at a million cycles and then we actually ramped it up even further than that and, and basically are trying to see how, uh, how well the engine uh, or the component that we're testing works. A million cycles basically is basically referring to a, a revolution to a point um, inside that engine. So a million cycles is a very, very good benchmark on a lot of different tests to get a very, very good feel for how, um, how it's standing up to a, an endurance type situation. All right, guys, well, I hope you uh, have enjoyed some of the stuff we've talked about here. 
um, you know, just a couple of points in closing is uh, this is uh, the Spintron is all about it's a tool and we use this tool every single day. We have multiple units here that we do. The key to this is being able to create reliable, repeatable horsepower. Everybody wants the most power, but they also want it to last. That's what we really do here, and we do it every single day. The fact that we actually have been allowed to stand in here for this amount of time to video, um, we got one of our engineers sitting outside right now, literally tapping his toe, ready to run this thing. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna let him get back to that. But uh, but really, hope you enjoyed the video. Please uh, make any comments, uh, any questions that you guys have. If there's more things that you want to see on the Spintron, we'll do more video. So please leave your comments. Um, you can check out uh, more of our videos on the Horsepower Tech series as well in the, in the subscription list on YouTube. Um, we also have them on Facebook as well. And you can look us up on uh, the web also, compcams.com. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope you have a great day.